In this review tape, we're going to be going over our work on quadratic equations. Remember, this is just a review tape. We're going to just be doing examples. If you have difficulty following the material, then of course you should go back and look at the original videotape lessons on quadratic equations. In the first example, we want to solve for x, and we have the following. 3x squared minus 2x minus 6 equals x squared minus 3x minus 6. Okay, and to solve a quadratic equation, the best thing to do is to try to get all the terms on one side equal to 0. This is like our standard form for a quadratic equation. And we'll, then either we factor or complete the square or use the quadratic formula, one of those methods. Okay, so let's bring all the terms over to, say, the left side. We can subtract x squared from both sides of the equation. And at the same time, if we want, we can add 3x to both sides and add 6 to both sides. Okay, this of course gives us 0 on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we have 2x squared, 3x squared minus x squared, that's 2x squared, minus 2x plus 3x is plus 1x, and then minus 6 plus 6 gives us 0. Here we have uh, the simplest type of quadratic equation to solve for factoring, one in which the constant term is missing. It's since there is no constant terms, we can simply take out an x. We have a common factor for these two terms. This leaves us with 2x plus 1 equals 0. And after factoring, the idea is to get ourselves in positions, for example, like r times s equals 0. If the product of two numbers equals 0, this would imply that either r equals 0 or s equals 0, possibly both. Okay, so the product of two numbers is equal to zero. That means either the first is equal to zero or the second is equal to zero or both are equal to zero. Okay, it only works if you can get this product of two numbers equal to zero. If, for example, you had the product of two numbers equals ten. Okay, one could be two, one could be five, one could be ten, one could be one, one could be minus one, one could be minus ten. Of course, there are loads of possibilities. Zero is, of course, special. We know right away, automatically, that at least one of the numbers has to be zero. Either x equals zero or 2x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, well, this just gives us x equals 0. This gives us 2x equals minus 1, subtracting 1 from both sides, and x equals minus 1 half. So we have two solutions here. x equals 0, x equals minus 1 half. And of course, you can go back to the original equation and check these two. In our next example, once again, solve for x. 3x times x plus 1 equals x plus 3 quantity squared. Okay, first we're going to perform the indicated multiplications. Simplify, get everything on one side equal to 0, and then we will solve that quadratic equation. Using the distributive law here, 3x times x gives us 3x squared. 3x times 1 gives us 3x x plus 3 squared is, of course, x plus 3 times x plus 3. Multiplying it out by FOIL, we get the first terms, x squared. The outer is 3x. The inner is plus 3x. That's plus 6x. The last terms for plus 9. Okay, and then once again, trying to get everything on, say, it could be the left or the right side, equal to 0. So we work with the left side again. We subtract x squared from both sides. Okay, we can also subtract 6x from both sides. I don't have room here. We'll take care of the 9 separately. This gives us 2x squared minus 3x equals 9. And then subtracting 9 from both sides of the equation. 2x squared minus 3x minus 9 equals 0. Here we have our quadratic equation in the standard form ready for us to factor. It's a little harder than the one before. Just want to remind you in the example before it was the easiest one to factor. There was no constant term. So an automatic factor was x and then we were just left with this other linear factor and we were able to work it out. Here we have no common factor. We're going to try to see if we can write this trinomial as a product of two binomials. And it's a certain amount of trial and error. We know that the 2x squared is going to come from, say, a 2x and an x. But as far as the minus 9, 
we could have a minus 9 and a plus 1, or a plus 9 and a minus 1, a minus 3 and a plus 3, or a plus 3 and a minus 3. And if you write down those possibilities and consider them all, it turns out that there is one that works, 2x plus 3 times x minus 3. And we would check this using FOIL, 2x squared, minus 6x plus 3x is minus 3x minus 9. Okay, so we have factored it. And we have like r times s equals 0, so either r equals 0 or s equals 0. This gives us 2x equals minus 3, x equals minus 3 halves. And here, x equals plus 3. And these can, of course, be checked in the original equation. Okay, once again, solve for x. This time we have a fractional equation, 6 over x plus 1 minus 2 over x minus 3 equals 4. And the way we handle all fractional equations is to try to get rid of the fractions. That is, to find the LCD, the lowest common denominator, and multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD to clear the fractions. We will then solve the resulting equation. Okay, when you handle a fractional equation, particularly one that has uh, variables in the denominator, okay, the check becomes very important. Okay, why in the other in the other examples I said, well, we would solve, we can check both in the original equation, and you sh you know it's nice to do, but it's not essential. On a fractional equation where there are variables in the denominator, it becomes much more important to check. It is possible that while we were solving the equation, we introduced a root what we thought was a root that really is not a root to the original equation. Because basically, we solve the one without fractions. Okay? So you have to go back to the original equation and check. Another time when you really should check, and a formal check would be when you have an equation involving radicals. And for example, you've squared both sides of the equation. You can also introduce an extraneous solution and that type of a problem. We'll consider one of those a little later on. Okay, back over here, the LCD in this problem is simply the product of the denominators, x plus 1 times x minus 3. This, of course, is like 4 over 1 here. OK, so I'm going to multiply each and every term by the LCD. We're going to have x plus 1 times x minus 3 times 6 over x plus 1 then minus x plus 1 times x minus 3 times 2 over x minus 3 equals 4 times x plus 1 times x minus 3. This, of course, is over 1. This is over 1. These are all over 1, and we can just leave it like that. Multiplying each and every part here by x plus 1 times x minus 3. Now, in the first term here, the x plus 1s are going to cancel, leaving us with 6 times x minus 3. Take away, in here, the x minus 3s are going to cancel, leaving us with 2 times x plus 1. And the minus sign, of course, comes from the subtraction. And then over here, 4 times and we can multiply x plus 1 times x minus 3. And if we do that by FOIL, we get x squared. Outer is minus 3x. The inner is plus 1x. So it's minus 2x. And the last is minus 3. We're now going to try to simplify this quadratic equation. We're going to uh, distribute the 4 here, the 2 here, and the 6 there. And then we're going to collect the terms, the like terms. Let's see what we have, 6x. 6 times minus 3 is minus 18. 6x minus 18. Here, actually, we're going to distribute the minus 2. It's a little easier that way. Minus 2x minus 2. And over here, distribute the 4. 4x squared minus 8x minus 12. OK, on the left side, we can simplify. We can say 6x minus 2x is 4x minus 18 minus 2 is minus 20, equals 4x squared minus 8x minus 12. 
and we're going to put our quadratic equation into standard form, that is everything on one side equals zero, and in this example it certainly seems easier to get everything on the right side and zero on the left. So I will subtract 4x from both sides and add 20 to both sides, giving us zero on the left equals 4x squared minus 12x plus 8. And we'd like to factor this. Okay, now you may say, well, uh, there is a constant term, so I'm going to immediately try to make it the product of two binomials. But you should remember, in any factoring, we always look for a common factor. And although we don't have x as a common factor here, we do have 4 as a common factor. And we can pull out 4, leaving us with x squared minus 3x plus 2. And if we do that, the factoring becomes much simpler. Okay, whereas this would have required a lot of trial and error here to factor x squared minus 3x plus 2. Since there's only one way to make the x squared, we can say to ourselves that we want two numbers which multiply to plus 2 and add to minus 3, minus 2, and minus 1. x squared minus 3x plus 2 times the 4. In a sense, we have like the product of three numbers equals 0, r times s times t. We can say either this equals 0, or this equals 0, or this e equals 0. Of course, 4 can't be equal to 0, and it can be ignored. Alternately, you could simply say, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 4. And you would have 0 equals x minus 2 times x minus 1. So either way, it becomes basically a situation of x minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0, leaving us, le leading us to x equals 2 and x equals 1. Two possible answers. And in a fractional equation, okay, it is very important to do the check. 6 over x plus 1 minus 2 over x minus 3 equals 4. We'd like to check each of these answers. Okay, we have to check the x equals 2. And when we check x equals 2, what do we get? We plug in here, we'll get 6 over 2 plus 1 minus 2 over 2 minus 3 should be equal to 4. 6 over 2 plus 1, that's 6 over 3. 6 over 3 is 2 minus 2 over minus 1. 2 over minus 1 is minus 2. This should be equal to 4, and of course, 4 equals 4. It checks out. 6 over 3, that's 2, minus 2 over minus 1, that's minus 2, 2 minus a minus 2, 4 equals 4. The other one is to check x equals 1. And if we do that, we get, plugging into the original equation, 6 over 1 plus 1 minus 2 over 1 minus 3 should be equal to 4. 6 over 2, that's 3, minus 2 over minus 2. 2 over minus two. 1 minus 3, that's minus 2. 2 over minus 2 is minus 1. 3 minus a minus 1 is 4, and it checks out. Okay, so we have solved this problem. Both of these are solutions. Okay, now, while in the last three examples we were able to factor each of the resulting quadratic equations, okay, it is not always true that we can solve a quadratic equation by factoring. And I want to show you, we go over another method, that is the method of completing the square here. I mean, there's no question if the problem factors, factoring is easier than completing the square, but not everything does factor. Okay, solve by completing the square. And then after we do that, I want you to check it by using the quadratic formula.
And the example is x squared minus 6x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, and this you can sort of convince yourself very easily that it doesn't factor. We'd need two numbers which multiply to minus 5 and add to minus 6, and we're not going to be able to find integers that do that. Um, if it had been, for example, x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0, two numbers which multiply to plus 5 and add to minus 6, then we could factor in this form. x squared minus 6x plus 5. Okay, but this way we can find two numbers, two integers here, which uh, multiply to minus 5 and add to minus 6. So we're going to um, do this by completing the square. I uh, just want to remind you of how completing the square works. It's basically, you know, we try to write this as a perfect square, and then we solve by extracting roots, taking square roots of both sides. If you have, for example, x plus p squared, this is x squared plus 2px plus p squared. So we're going to have to ask ourselves, Okay, what's missing to make this a perfect square? The first step, of course, is to get the constant over to the other sides. In this sense, it differs from all the other techniques that uh, the technique of factoring and also the quadratic formula. In those cases, we want standard form, everything on one side equal to zero. But for completing the square, we want to get the constant over to the other side. So we start with x squared minus 6x equals 5. And we ask ourselves, how can we make uh, x squared minus 6x look like a perfect square? In other words, what's missing? We say, well, if you think of the coefficient of x as 2p, if 2p were equal to minus 6, dividing both sides by 2, p would be equal to minus 3. p squared would be equal to plus 9. In other words, what you're missing is plus 9. If you could have a plus 9, this would be a perfect square. In fact, if you had the plus 9, this would be x minus 3 squared. If you were to add, if you could add plus 9, this would be x squared minus 6x plus 9. This is x minus 3 squared. The p is what goes in over here. Okay, so we said, gee, I wish I had x squared minus 6x plus 9, then I could handle it. But I only have x squared minus 6x. But since this is part of an equation, you are free to add 9 to both sides of the equation. In other words, on the right, you'll get 14. And on the left, you will have x squared minus 6x plus 9 or x minus 3 squared, which, of course, we have now a perfect square. And we can solve this by... Uh, extracting roots, that is, take square roots of both sides. x minus 3 is plus or minus the square root of 14. And then adding 3 to both sides, x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 14. And we get two solutions, x equals 3 plus the square root of 14, x equals 3 minus the square root of 14. Okay, if you want to somehow make this whole process a little more automatic, this business of completing the square. We can analyze what we did. We said 2p here is minus 6. We took half of that for p and we squared it. So if we want to do it all in one, we can say take the coefficient of the first degree term here. In this case, it's minus 6. Have it, get minus 3, square it, get 9, and that's what you add to both sides. Okay. Take half the coefficient, square it, and add it to both sides. Okay, now let's also check this uh, example by using the quadratic formula. Okay, we're going to, I'm going to do another method. I'm going to solve this by using the quadratic formula see that we do get the same answer. It's really up to you. Most people find the quadratic formula easier than completing the square. Okay, but you do have the option. x squared minus 6x minus 5 equals 0. You leave the problem in the standard form. You try to write it as, in other words, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. 
knowing that if you can write it like that, then x is given by the formula minus b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, the first thing to do, however, is to figure out what a, b, and c are and actually write them down. a is the coefficient of x squared, therefore a is plus 1. b is the coefficient of x, that is minus 6. You include the sign. c is the constant term with the sign minus 5. So we get for x minus b, that is minus a minus 6 plus or minus the square root of minus 6 squared minus 4, a which is 1, c which is minus 5, all over 2a, 2 times 1. So what do we get? Minus or minus 6, that's plus 6, plus or minus the square root of minus 6 squared, that's 36. Minus 4 times minus 5 is plus 20, all over 2. Let's continue over here. We have x equal 6 plus or minus the square root. Now 36 plus 20, that's 56 over 2. All right, now we'd like to get this in simplest radical form, and we notice that 56 is 4 times 14. It can be simplified somewhat because it does have a perfect square factor. So we write this as 4 times 14 over 2. And then we can say that the square root of 4 times 14 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 14, the square root of 4, which is 2, times the square root of 14. And then finally, we can, don't just go in and cancel 2's or something like that. Of course, you have to factor, only cancel factors, not terms. And 2 is a factor in the numerator. If you pull out a 2, you're left with 3 plus and minus the square root of 14 over 2 here. 2 times 3, 6, plus or minus 2, the square root of 14. Now the 2's can cancel, leaving us with x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 14. And if you go back over here, this is exactly what we got by completing the square. x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 14. And as I say, it's up to you to decide which method you'd rather use, which you consider to be simpler. Most people sort of rely on the quadratic formula. But in this case, it seems almost that this was really a little bit less work. Okay, I'd like to do uh, another example, also solving by completing the square and checking using the formula. This will be example number five. Now, in this case, the completing the square gets a little complicated. See, if this was as bad as hard as it was going to get, I think completing the square you might even prefer. Okay, but in the next example, it makes a good case for the quadratic formula, because the completing the square gets a little difficult. And the example is the following, 2x squared minus 10x minus 3 equals 0. Now let's assume that you've tried to factor, and you've gone through all of your trial and error possibilities, and it doesn't seem to factor. Okay, you can't get the binomial factors with integer coefficients, so we try something else. So we do it by completing the square. Okay, we don't use the straight standard form. We get the constant over to the other side. So we add 3 to both sides. And we get 2x squared minus 10x equals 3. Okay, uh, one other catch. The technique of completing the square that I've showed you is based on x plus p squared. It's based on having coefficient of x squared plus 1. So if there's some other number for the coefficient, I want you to divide both sides of the equation by that number first. So in this case, I will divide both sides of the equation by 2, and it uh, means each term gets divided by 2, giving me x squared minus 5x equals 3 halves. Okay. Now we're going to use our procedure for completing the square. We're going to take half of the coefficient, Okay, if you prefer the 2p business, I mean, use it. 
2p is minus 5, therefore p is minus 5 halves. In other words, half the coefficient, one half of minus 5 is minus 5 halves. Some people prefer it this way, some people can do it in their heads. And then p squared, what you're going to add to both sides is 25 quarters. Or you simply say in your head, half this coefficient minus 5 halves. The coefficient is minus 5, half of it is minus 5 halves. Square 25 quarters, add that to both sides of the equation. So either way. Now you get x squared minus 5x plus 25 quarters on the left equals 3 halves plus 25 quarters on the right. Let me just rewrite that here. x squared minus 5x plus 25 quarters equals 3 halves plus 25 quarters. Now, on the left side, we happen to have a perfect square. It is x plus p squared, that is x minus 5 halves squared. On the right side, we'd have to combine these fractions. We'd like to combine over the same denominator, so this is 25 quarters. If you want to build a fraction equivalent to 3 halves, having the denominator 4, you say I multiply the denominator by 2, therefore I have to multiply the numerator by 2 as well. So we get x minus 5 halves squared equals 6 quarters plus 25 quarters. They have the same denominator, so you simply combine numerators and put them over the common denominator. We can now solve by extracting roots, taking square roots of both sides. x minus 5 halves is plus or minus the square root of 31 quarters. Or x minus 5 halves is plus or minus the square root of 31 over the square root of 4, which is 2. And finally, x equals 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 31 over 2. Now I'd like to check by solving the same problem using the quadratic formula. Two x squared minus ten x minus three equals zero. We match this up to ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We do not first transpose the constant or bring the constant over the other side. We leave everything in standard form. Everything on one side equals zero. We figure out what a is. It's two. B is minus 10, C is minus 3. And then X is minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A. X equals minus B minus or minus 10 plus or minus the square root b squared, that's minus 10 squared, minus 4, times a, which is 2, c, which is minus 3, all over 2a, or 2 times 2. x equals minus or minus 10, that's plus 10, plus or minus the square root of minus 10 squared, that's 100. Minus 4 times 2, that's minus 8 times minus 3 is plus 24 over 4. So that's 10 plus or minus the square root of 124 over 4. And uh, there is a perfect square factor of 124, so it's not in simplest radical form if we uh, realize that 124 is 4 times 31. We get x equals 10 plus or minus the square root of 4, that's 2, times the square root of 31 over 4. 
uh, we can factor out a 2 on top, leaving us with 2 times 5 plus or minus the square root of 31 on top, and 4, which is 2 times 2 on the bottom. The 2's cancel, so we get a final answer of 5 plus and minus the square root of 31 over 2. And if you go back to our answer by completing the square, we have 5 plus or minus the square root of 31 all over 2 if you were to combine the fractions. Now, I just want to point out that when you work it out by completing the square, you generally get these two parts. When you work it out by uh, the quadratic formula, because of the formula set up, you get the whole thing over the denominator. But you see, of course, it's the same thing. 5 plus or minus the square root of 31 over 2 here. Here, 5 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 31 over 2. Okay, now, in the next example, I'm going to let you choose your own method to solve it. In general, this is what problems will be like. No one will tell you how to solve it. You can solve it by any method of your choice. We have example 6, solve for x. 3x squared plus 7x equals 20. All right, now, considering, I mean, completing the square is sometimes not too bad, but if it involves fractions, generally the quadratic formula is easier. So most people tend to go either with the factoring or the quadratic formula. Completing the square is sort of a third choice, a poor third. Okay, uh, you can try to solve immediately by the formula or spend some time uh, with the factoring. Let's say we tried to do this by factoring here. 3x squared plus 7x minus 20 equals 0. Okay, 